Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, can non-speaking children who have autism learn how to spell to communicate? And this one has been prompted, um, this video has been prompted of me uh, through a book that I just read uh, called Underestimated. And it's the story of a 17-year-old uh, child with autism, never been able to speak, learn how to spell to communicate, to basically communicate his thoughts, his novel thoughts, um, not just things that he has learned in a day, but things that he has learned throughout his life. Um, and it was a very moving story, moving book. Uh, I'll show you a picture here in a sec, but I just wanted to talk about this because there are a lot of people who learn um, ways or, or basically learn that you know kids with autism do not have the ability kids with you know non-speaking autism do not have the ability to have their own thoughts do not have good cognition and that is completely false at least according to this book and according to many other kids that have been able to learn how to spell to communicate and so i want to put this out there i also want to show a research article um, on spelling to communicate to show that these kids have uh, very good eye movements to show that they are producing their own thoughts when they are spelling with a letter board and I really just want to emphasize this point that kids with autism may be completely underestimated so let's go first I'll show you what the uh, book looks like uh, so here it is. It is underestimated an autism miracle. Uh, it's Jamie Handley is the 17 year old autistic boy um, in the story, but JB Handley is his father and he wrote about Jamie and then Jamie has uh, obviously multiple parts as well where he is speaking or writing through the book as well. So now let's switch to that article. Okay, I think we are all set here. Perfect, so this is from Nature. And Nature is a very popular journal. It's called Eye Tracking Reveals Agency in Assisted Autistic Communication. It is from 2020. And right away here in the abstract, we talk about about one third of autistic people have the limited ability to use speech. Um, and the reason why I should say, which I didn't mention initially, was that autism affects fine motor skills. Fine motor skills meaning muscles in our hands, like our thumb, our, um, our digits, and then also muscles in our vocal cords, these fine motor skills. And so therefore, a lot of children with autism have a poor ability to use their hands and fine motor skills, use their vocal cords, and therefore have difficulties speaking, typing, writing with their hand. Okay, so they have limited use of speech. Some have learned how to communicate by pointing to letters of, of the alphabet. Um, this method is controversial though because it requires assistance of another person. Um, and so some scientists have dismissed the possibility that non-speaking autistic person who communicates with assistance could be conveying their own thoughts. So in the study, they used uh, head-mounted eye tracking to investigate this communi communicative agency. Basically, the these kids that have learned how to use the letter board, they were looking to see are the eye movements matching with where they're using their their letter or their um their hand and pointing with their hand, and are they able to therefore have quick eye movements in a almost predictive fashion to show that they have agency and know how to spell and therefore convey their own thoughts. Um, participants pointed to about one letter per second, rarely made spelling errors, and visually fixated most letters about half of a second before pointing to them. That shows that one, it was quick, it was they were using their own thoughts to get there. Additionally, their response times reflected planning and production processes, characteristic of fluent spelling in non-autistic typists, um, so those that are, have the ability to type. And these findings render a cueing account of participants' performance unlikely so basically that the 
uh, person holding the letter board is probably not cueing them. Uh, and the speed, accuracy, timing, and visual fixation patterns suggest that participants pointed to letters they selected themselves, not they were directed by an assistant. Okay, so the reason I wanna show this here, we're gonna just look right at the bottom of the uh, introduction. And here it says, um, the results of these experimental message passes, passing uh, articles, tests, many scientists can conclude that anyone who appears to communicate with assistance, into, including individuals with accomplishments like those described above, is actually responding to subtle cues from the assistant. So as a result, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, or the ASHA, recently published two position statements actively discouraging speech language pathologists from teaching individuals to type or point to letters with assistance and cautioning against believing information obtained from individuals who communicate in these ways. And now this, and by reading the book, um, it's very degrading to these kids, to these parents who have found out that they can get their children to learn through this spelling to communicate way. Um, that is the, the company name, spelling to communicate. Um, and so that's just something that I really wanted to emphasize. And this article shows that it's likely that they are not using uh, somebody else. So here's just a picture. Um, basically, the, uh, the child with autism is pointing to letters and the red dot represents where his eyes are or her eyes are. And so here, uh, looking at the L, pointing to the L, and before the point goes to the next spot, the eyes are now looking at the I, and then they point. And this all happens here. Um, the point to fixation is 374 milliseconds, followed by the fixation to then point is another 510 milliseconds. These are all pretty, like this is happening very fast, and the children are not moving their eyes all around the letter board, like they're searching or they're not looking up at the um, person that's holding the cueing board, and therefore we would be cueing them. Um, and so that is just something that I wanted to emphasize as well. Um, basically, the intervals, let's just go down to the discussion because that's a good spot. Um, the intervals happened very quickly and it matched up with the general thought process that typical people have when they need to spell or answer certain questions where it takes a little bit of time. Um, So here in the discussion, okay, by quantitatively, quantitatively characterizing the in-situ communication in a sample of non-speaking autistic people who have learned to use a letter board, we have come to a very different conclusion than their ability to convey their own thoughts um, than has been suggested by previous research. Okay, so basically they can convey their own thoughts, they can answer questions clearly, and therefore they have become released from their prison of not being able to communicate. And that is such a meaningful thing for these parents and these kids. And so, again, this paper is from 2020. The book was uh, a 2021 release. And for me, it showed a lot when it came to how I work with uh, my kids that have autism, especially those that have difficulty with communication. We don't do spelling to communicate in our office. However, we do work on parts of the brain that deal with fine motor skills and therefore try to enhance this, these fine motor skills uh, so that maybe these children will be able to speak one day or um, just be able to use typing or use a phone uh, with fine motor skills. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm sorry for the glitching of the video. Uh, and I. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I'd love to hear them. Thank you very much and have a great day. Stay healthy.